In previous episodes, we've taken steps to try to correct the steering wander and the bump steer that I've been experiencing driving this S10 Blazer. We did a DIY alignment, so at least the toe should be pretty close. And other than a torsion bar crank, the front isn't really even lifted, so the caster should be totally fine. At this point, I've replaced pretty much all of the steering components. It has a remanufactured gearbox, a new pitman arm, a new idler arm, new inner and outer tie rod ends, new front wheel bearings, and new upper and lower ball joints. The rag joint on the steering shaft seemed to be in good shape, but I do have suspicions and need to replace the shaft on the future anyway as it rubs on the exhaust manifold. Certain years of Jeep Cherokees have solid steering shafts, and I'm keeping my eye out for a good deal on one of those. This is pretty much my last ditch effort to try to correct that little bit of steering wander and the bump steer that has only been worsened by installing larger tires. Bump steer basically refers to the tendency of a vehicle's steering system to veer to one side upon hitting a bump. This can be caused by suspension geometry, loose steering parts, tire configuration, all sorts of things. Putting on the larger and wider tires with the more aggressive tread pattern definitely increase the tendency to bump steer as well as the tendency to tramline. Tramlining is where a vehicle tends to follow the contours and indents in a road surface instead of going straight down the lane. I had a few kind of hairy moments where I hit really radical bumps while turning and it definitely tried to get me to go into the ditch or a jersey wall or just generally somewhere I don't want to be. So what we're adding today, in an attempt to reduce the vehicle's tendency to bump steer, tram line, and smooth out the steering in a variety of situations, is a steering stabilizer, also called a steering dampener. It looks like a shock absorber because it basically is. The function is mostly the same as a shock absorber. It's got oil in here in two chambers and a set of holes so that it dampens the movement of this rod as it lengthens and retracts. The difference is that this rod doesn't want to expand, it really just wants to stay where it is. This cylinder is mounted between the frame of the vehicle and the center link, so that as you're turning the wheels, the cylinder is retracting or being extended. The cylinder dampens that movement, and since it really desires to stay still, can help remove the effects of a little bit of slack in the steering system. At least, those are the effects I'm hoping it will have on the Blazer. Some S10s, I believe only ZR2s, but I'm not too sure because I heard some examples of very early S10s having stabilizers, so I'll just generalize to say that some four-wheel drive S10s came with steering stabilizers from the factory. Mine did not. The easiest way to tell is just by looking at your center link. The trucks that came with steering stabilizers have an extra bracket on the center link where the cylinder would mount. Trucks that did not come factory with steering stabilizers, like mine, do not have any such bracket. However, I believe in all cases, and definitely in my case, the four-wheel drive truck's frame still has its attachment point for the cylinder. I've seen people just get a steering stabilizer cylinder and weld a bolt onto the center link and use that as an attachment point. As long as you use a strong bolt and weld it on there really well, I'm sure that is a lasting mount. But what we've got here is a kit made specifically for four-wheel drive S10s to add a steering stabilizer on models that didn't have one. Of course you have the cylinder, but you also have this bracket, which uses U-bolts to clamp to the center link and attach the cylinder. The final straw that actually convinced me to get this thing was the same HOV bypass lane where I slid on the ice and crashed this into the wall. Until I drove on it again with bump steer in mind, I hadn't paid as much attention to the location of the steel joints in the bridge. There are two of them, one right at the start and the other about halfway down. If you'll remember from the crash video, I mentioned it lost control twice. Now, I caught it the first time, and then about halfway down the ramp, I lost it again. And I bet the bump steer, as well as the unloading of the drive tires, is what started the slide on the ice. Of course, it wasn't the only factor, and I shouldn't have been going that fast on the ice on that bridge in the first place, but realizing this was the final straw and convinced me to order the stabilizer. I got this kit for just over 50 bucks, and the standalone stabilizers are around 30, so for once I figured I'd let myself off the hook and do a little bit less work since it's already been done here. This should be a very straightforward and quick installation, but things tend not to go that way, so we shall see. When fully extended, the piston rod has seven and a quarter inches of travel, so when we bolt the bracket to the center link with the wheels pointed straight, we'll use the suggestion in the instructions of three and a half inches for the center point. That way it's approximately center in its travel, and it can retract about as much as it can extend to prevent it from bottoming out when turning in both directions. 
Since the steering stabilizer mounts to the center link, which is after the power steering system, it shouldn't add a significant amount of steering difficulty. Let's go ahead and get this thing bolted on, and hopefully it makes the truck more pleasant to drive. The first thing we need to do is remove the splash guard. With that off, let's get the frame side of the cylinder mounted. With that end on, and three and a half inches of the piston rod showing, we can get the other end hooked to the center link to mock up the location of it, to figure out where it needs to be bolted down. We'll hook the cylinder on the mounting pin, and run the mounting pin through the bracket. It seemed like it had to be as far to the right as possible, but because of where the idler arm mounts, it can't quite be three and a half inches away. The stabilizer needs to be retracted a little bit to around three and a quarter inches, but hopefully that'll still allow enough travel. We'll push the cylinder out of the way and tighten up those U-bolts. We'll use some blue Loctite and we'll make sure to tighten them up in even increments. So once the bracket is on there where we want it and it's tightened down, we'll use some more blue Loctite and tighten down the nut on each side of the mounting pin. What made this easy for me was to hold the top of the crow foot and just tighten the bottom with a regular socket. That way we can get both sides tight. So with that side all mounted, we'll go back and tighten the other side to the frame. This one uses a nylock nut, so I'm just going to apply a little bit of anti-seize. And that's it. The cylinder is mounted. That was alarmingly easy. Next, we'll make sure the cylinder doesn't bottom out on either end. We'll get the front wheels off the ground and then turn the steering wheel lock to lock. With the wheels turned all the way right, there's plenty of travel left. With the wheels turned all the way left, it's getting a little close, but there's still a little bit of travel there. But we have to remember that the front wheels rub the frame and the sway bar on this truck, so with it on the ground, they wouldn't even be able to turn that far. But for the sake of things, let's go ahead and take the wheels off and see how far it'll turn. With the wheels off, it seems like it turned an extra eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch, but there's still some travel left on both sides. So the last thing to do is see what effect the power steering has. With the engine running and the wheel turned even past the point where the tires are rubbing, there's still a tiny bit of clearance on the left side. But turning the wheel real far, I did manage to get it to just start to bottom out the cylinder. Now I don't think this is going to be a problem because again, this is farther than you would ever normally turn it. And by turning it that hard, you're starting to risk breaking other components as well. So within a normal turning radius, there's still some travel left. I think this will do just fine. So now that I feel okay about that, we'll go ahead and take it for a drive. After driving with the stabilizer for a while, it definitely did help. It really did smooth out the steering and remove a lot of bump steer. It does still tend to wander and want to tram line on certain road surfaces, and a certain amount of that is probably down to the tread on the tires. But with all the work we've done, I'm convinced it should be better than it is. Other than getting a proper machine alignment and having the caster checked, the last remaining link 
is that intermediate steering shaft. So as I mentioned earlier, I'll be looking for one with solid U-joints to replace the rubber in this one in the future. 